Usually, when people think of trams, they either think of something like this, or something a bit friendlier looking. Indeed, steam trams or tram engines are an actual thing. So too are diesel and electric tram locomotives. Steam trams are not just ordinary steam locomotives with a house built around the boiler either. If you were to line up an arbitrary range of locomotives, the tram locomotives of old would not look out of the ordinary at all. But if you put a modern interpretation of a tram alongside full-size trains for use on big intercity mainlines, they stick out like a sore thumb. Why is that? Well, to put it simply, back in ye olde choo-choo train era, the definition of tram had not really been set in stone. The first urban trams were pulled by horses, and in areas with extreme terrain, they were held by a cable running between the rails. These forms of trams are generally the easiest to explain, as there really are very few detailed differences in operation. The carriage rode along rails embedded in public roads, very little fancy about that. This is why in some places a tram is more often known as a streetcar. Because that is what it is. A carriage, or a car, that runs along the street. Tram engines were the logical next step for mechanical movement of trams. Is that the right way of phrasing it? Here is where things get a bit tricky in terms of definition. Wikipedia, only the most reliable source, lists the following requirements for meeting the definition of tram engine. The engine must be governed to a maximum speed of 16 km an hour, or 9.9 .9 miles an hour, which was 12 km an hour, or 7.5 miles an hour in the UK. No steam or smoke may be emitted. It must be free from the noise produced by blast or clatter. The machinery must be concealed from view at all points above 10 cm from rail level. And most of the locomotives have a cab at each end. Note how even that last requirement isn't a hard rule as much as it is a guideline. It also doesn't help that Wikipedia does state that these regulations differed between countries. What this does not change though, as far as steam trams are concerned, was your average steam tram having a few distinct features. The wheels are mostly covered to avoid accidents. A steam tram is usually very small and they tend to have a bell. The boiler is set into what is essentially a little open shed. The most famous class of tram engine, no doubt because of Thomas, is the Great Eastern Railway's C-53. It nails every expectation of a tram locomotive. It literally is a square box with covered wheels and a chimney poking out the top. But then this is also a tram locomotive. Its wheels are covered, sure, but it isn't in a box. Okay, so the box cab at either end thing is not a requirement, got it. So the wheels have to be covered at all t Oh, no, wait, th this is also a tram. Okay, okay, so no box, no covered wheels, but it is not allowed to make noise and it cannot emit steam or smoke. Uh, wait, wait, no, that is exhaust steam right there, so that's also not a requirement set in stone. Surely the locos working trams wouldn't make any sound, right? That would be annoying if you were to live next to a tr- Okay, fine. They are allowed to make noise. But to my credit, the NS-81000s were not billed as tram and what's that? They were actually used to run trams? Alright, I get it. A tram engine does not need to have its wheels covered. It does not need a cab at either end, it does not need to be silent, and it is allowed to emit smoke and steam. Okay. So, from the beginning. Your average steam tram has a few distinct features. It usually has a bell, and is a comparatively small steam locomo- Oh, come on! <sighs> Deep breaths. As previously mentioned, diesel and electric trams are also a thing. Take, for instance, this diesel- motor car that is also producing quite a bit of noise and also emits black smoke. Is the next clip going to show a diesel tram with its wheels uncovered? Of course it is! In conclusion, these are all trams because they are the same principle but with slight differences between them. Some can be electric and some can be diesel powered. These are all trams because whomever owned or built them said they were.